From the beginning of time until the end of man. Right now, From the day one to the last day. Right now, you the weight of the universe right now, is a burden that we all have to carry. Just know, right now, I'll carry yours. You're my cargo. There's no way to prepare for what you Without a limit, not timid about the way I feel. You would never understand life until you foot the bill. For something you created, related, undebated. You sacrifice all that you know just so that they can win. That pristine queen carries the precious cargo. Nine months feels like forever until the time goes. Lord knows nothing changes a man more than the birth. Watch your heart open up to the world and what is worth. There's no way to prepare for what you We back, it's your boy Nick Ma September, and this is the Enigma Sep Hour Podcast. Welcome back. This is episode two thirty five. Mikey, I don't, know. I don't, I don't remember. Anyway, episode two thirty five of the Enigma Sep Hour Podcast. What you just heard, is my man, uh, Dennis Hobbs. Sorry, bro. Sorry, uh, cobwebs. My man, Dennis Hobbs, featuring Moplex. That's Oplex and Mo Mackey, a.k.a. Duck 13, with Precious Cargo. Uh, shouts out to them. Um, pretty sure Dennis is trying to set up to get on the podcast soon, sooner than later. So we're going to do that. Anyway, um, again, congratulations to everybody that's here that's listening. I appreciate y'all. This is the second installment of the new, 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 new podcast. We didn't even... I ain't, I ain't even comfortable yet. I'm still trying to <laughs> trying to put a dent in this seat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but <laughs> I appreciate any and everybody that's, uh, that's fell through. Also, let me before I start off, man, let me give a big, big shout out to my wife, Felicia. Let me get these hands. Nori claps. Nori claps. Uh, dang, Mikey, what, what was that, bro? <laughs> I got a parks now. How y'all like that? Take that, Joe Button. I got a parks. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I like my wife, Felicia. Uh, her cookbook has been released, at least for the pre-orders. Um, so, yeah, it's been crazy dope. We have a copy at the crib. Now, there was uh, a little discrepancy. So, some of the pre-orders, um, I think, was sent back or there was a refund whatever, first time jitters, it's all good, the book's going to be reprinted, and then she's going to uh, push back her uh, signing dates, uh, I think it's supposed to be in May, now they may be sometime in June, but it works out, because her birthday is in June, so hey, you guys show up for her birthday, show us some love um, for the cookbook, but it looks beautiful, she did a beautiful job, and uh, man, let's teach some of y'all how to cook, teach some of y'all how to cook, how about that, huh, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> anyway, um, enough about that. Let me get to my supporters. You guys showed up and showed out. Um, I think it was last episode. Asked for you guys to go out and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I was almost to 300, 300 subscribers. Shut your face. I'm proud of it. Anyway, <laughs> as you can see, we've reached the mile zone. Met the milestone, jeez. Nori claps yet again. Me, <laughs> we ran, ran these numbers up. So, and because of that, um, my wife promised me a bag of Skittles. Because I like Skittles. So, yeah. So, the next toy I can get out of the, the toy ch chase, chess, I can't speak. Uh <laughs> Is a Spider Man, a toy Spider Man. So if we can get the four hundred subscriber guys, my wife is gonna buy me a toy Spider Man. So do it for five year old e Enigma, please. I'm joking. My favorite. That wasn't even my favorite like uh, Marvel comic. 
I was five. You know what I like? Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hulk was my favorite. Like, I had Incredible Hulk curtains, uh, pea soil. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. I ain't pee in the bed. But at uh, the, the comforter, a cover, curtains, everything was Incredible Hulk. And then apparently the next year, I had an infatuation, pause, with <laughs> Mr. T. So everything was Mr. T. I think I even had like a toy machine gun. It was 1985. You had to be there. Anyway. <laughs> so I thought that my dad and my mom buy me a toy machine gun <laughs> for pre-K. So that's out to the 18. All right. Where we at? What's, what's next on the docket? Um, last Friday. Last Friday. Uh, VHS uh, held a beat battle. Uh, hosted by none other than the Beast. Shouts out to the Beast. Um, came together, invited people uh, for a, a randy good time, and it really was. Uh, the judges were myself, um, KG Green. Uh, for those who were here a couple weeks ago, that was the other burly guy that was <laughs> standing next to me, sitting next to me uh, here in the last episode. And um, I can call him my little sis, Ari A. Moore, came down from Atlanta to judge the uh, the beats. Uh, the contestants were <laughs> – the contestants is a weird word. I mean, they're producers. It wasn't like it was a game show. It wasn't like it was freaking uh, The Price is Right. But anyway, that's what I wrote. Sue me. Uh, the contestants were Outlaw Beats and Mother Color. Uh, man, great time. Good people, and the chicken, yeah, chicken was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm joking. The chick, the chicken was delicious. It, it was, it was good chicken. Trust me, it was, it was good. It was good chicken, cause it was free, and you can't diss free chicken. If you have to pay for it, shut your mouth. And you stick it in your mouth. Hey, yo, got to relax. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, I want to clear the air about one thing. Uh, when he got down to the the, the, the beat contest, um, there were no rules to it. We weren't given any rules. Uh, I actually hit up a beat expert, someone who – has been in the field, <laughs> and I asked him. I was like, "Yo, I, I I'm a rapper. I ain't no producer. I made like a beat or two back in the day, but what you know? What's the the deal?" And they was just like, "It's a vibe, bro. Just it was ever good." So I just went in looking for whatever the vibe was. Um, there was no rules, and in the end, uh, Outlaw won. Um, Actually, fuck outlaw. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it was tough for me because that's my bro. That's my bro. I mean, I make a full disclosure. I mean, my first uh, song back, or my first solo project, the first song I wrote was a beat from him. He hit me up. He was like, yo, E, <laughs> he don't want to give you a beat. Um, what you want? I was like, give me some okay shit. He gave me some MF Doom shit, and I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this, bro? Like, what is this? This long-ass intro. <laughs> what am I going to do with this? Uh, I made it work. And if, you, if you've if you ever listened to any of my, my first project, the song She's Beautiful, is that beat. Uh, and out of my projects, I want to say 60% of the projects are made by him. So I'm definitely biased. And I came in knowing that was a bias, and I was actually trying to fight it. So the fact that I swayed his way was really me fighting against what I knew I would probably go go with. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it went that way. But it could have went either way, honestly. It could have went either way. Pause. Um, and so I just wanted to definitely give a shout out to Mother Color. She had uh, some really dope beats. Um, 
And like we was really there. And they <laughs> what really got me was my man KG was like, yo, this sounds like some like adult swim shit. And I was like, and it it really it wasn't like a joke. Like he was joking, but it wasn't like a ha ha, like nah. Like it really kind of opened my mind, like, oh shit. It is. Like this really is some MF Doom shit. Anyway, but it was dope. It was super dope. So I just want to clear the air and let it be known that it could have went either way. Uh, both producers were dope, um, and I really appreciate it. And I, I love y'all, man. Raspberry Raps, you know that. Joe, you know that. It's all good. So I just want to clear the air with that. Anyway, on to the next news. Uh, <laughs> Mikey mad, like, motherfucker, I got all these sound effects, and you making noise with your mouth, Paul's. Biz Marquee looking at uh, <laughs> In other news, speaking of Biz Marquee, uh, Childish Gambino is dropping a new album. Yay. Nah, bro. Uh, we straight. <laughs> Yo, don't get it twisted. I'm probably one of the few people who will say that because the internet is a classic. I love that album. I love that album. I love that album. Um, yeah, but we got too much going on right now. And we, we can't be thinking about good music, okay? You, you dropped a dope album. You dropped a dope TV series. A couple of movies. Yeah, yeah. It was a, you got another series that's out. Was it me and Mrs. Jones, whatever? The Smiths, me and Mrs. Smith, whatever. Uh, you're not Brad Pitt, bro. But anyway, <laughs> at the end of the day, Charles Gambino is talented. We appreciate you. Oh, yeah, I forgot. This is America. Like, that whole thing. Like, bro, we good. But that's not what we're talking about because this is America. And now it's time for beef. You got to hit me, Mikey. Hit me with something. Hit me with the magic. It's time for beef. Get ready for it. <laughs> and for the main event. Yes, we have a Royal Rumble. Um, right now it's Drizzy versus everyone. Everyone. Everybody. I don't know what I want to say. Um, so, yeah, after that J. Cole fiasco, um... Drake uh, took a shot with uh, actually the name of the, the song is Push Ups dropping Give Me 50 uh, where in the song he takes shots at Kendrick Future, Metro Booming The Weeknd and Rick Ross and with that Rick Ross responded back in a couple of hours with uh, this Champagne Moments now, those in podcast land, you're like, oh, why, why is everyone laughing on YouTube? Bro, this picture. <laughs> Am I looking at her? Yep. I, I, I want to say nigga, but I can't because, look, I, I feel uncomfortable using the N-word next to this picture because this is, bro. <laughs> So Ross is running with a song called Champagne Moments. Um, and Drake, after that, responded with a text convo with, with his mother. Yeah. That, that's what that's all we got? Just a text conversation with your mom calling Rick Ross racist? I mean, he was. He talked about your nose, but... Your mom, bro? You throwing your mom in this? <sighs> okay, anyway. Hey, it's exciting. It's all exciting. And it's push rap. Uh, back to number one on the Billboard charts. Um, I think the Metro Booming Future song uh, that had the Kendrick uh, verse that started all this crap. Um, it's number one on Billboard charts. This time last year, People were asking if hip hop was dead because there were no hip hop songs at number one at like halfway through the year. And people was like, is it death for hip hop? Um, so it's a win, right? Maybe. 
Um, but my beef is that um, my beef is not necessarily with everything that's going on. Granted, Kendrick is in my top five, so I am a little biased, and I really hope he proves me right. Or I'm going to have to drop his ass. Anyway. <laughs> but no, my beef is this idea that this all of this battling and beef is going to save hip-hop. Read my shirt. Nah, bro. Nah. You know what save, You know what can save hip-hop? You know what has saved hip-hop? Uh, dope albums. Dope performances. Message, messages that tell authentic stories about our experiences. That is what's going to save hip-hop. Um, not petty jokes and screenshots of text threads with your mom. Your mom entered the group chat when this rap beef. Drake, really? Uh, I'm biased. I'm biased. <laughs> Again, it's all exciting, um, but it's not the end all. It's not the be all, end all. It's not like, oh, we had this battle, hip hop would be dead. Nah, that's not the case. Um, there's a lot of other things that can happen and should be happening. And, ain't gonna front, kind of interesting. That you guys think hip hop is dead when for the past year or so, or maybe two, or maybe three, the ladies have been holding it down. So maybe, Mr. Machismo, maybe hip hop isn't dead. Maybe it just evolved and the ladies been running it and you feel you feel excluded. Go and grab your balls. Anyway. <laughs> but also too, man, to you old heads. I can say that because I shaved my beard, so I don't look as old as I did last week or the week, <laughs> two weeks ago. <laughs> so your whole old head should know how this could end because not the last time, but there was a time when all of this exciting beef ended with like the biggest loss we ever experienced. And it took almost a decade, if that, to get over that. So, my thing is, I'm not sure why we would think that this would rejuvenate when, honestly, it could get messy. Because none of these dudes are not saying that anything won't happen. People are saying, oh, it's just going to be lyrical. Yeah, but Kendrick got his people in Cali. Pretty sure Drake got his people in the dot. Uh, Rick got his people in Miami. Future got his people in Atlanta. And it could be a hot summer. And even with, I mean, if you go back to the Puffy, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the Buffy, uh, I'm sorry, Butt Daddy. Uh, <laughs> if you go back to uh, the bad boy Death Row Beef in the 90s, yo, there was people that was getting hurt and even murked. Prior to Biggie and Pop, that just became the apex of the situation. But there were people being hurt and other things happening because of this beef. So I'm just um, – I'm, I'm not into this idea that it's going to save hip-hop. Um, if people going to write, if they're going to sharpen their pen, they're going to sharpen their pen. But do that, like, get inspiration with trying to push your album to the limit. Get that inspiration by trying to push your creativity to the limit. Your recording style, how you record, where you record, um, the people you work with. Go and find some some new bloods and put them on. You know, switch it up, change it up. And honestly, that's another thing too. Like a lot of these guys, man, like they pushing forty. I mean, granted, Drake did make a joke that. Rick Ross is pushing 50. That shit kind of funny. But, <laughs> yo, let me, oh, before I get, into, get too serious, let me say this, man. Let me, I don't want to get it twisted. The, all the songs been dope. Ain't gonna front. Even the future song. And I was just talking to AD. I'm not really a big future fan. But that joint, I can, I can, I can ride with. I can rock with. Uh, I'm not gonna forgive him for that, that shit they put on the, uh, the Black Panther. Wait, 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 what the fuck he did, Mikey, on that joint? That was, 
<laughs> Kendrick, Kendrick and J Rock was doing their thing, and then Future, wait, wait, wait. Like even in this song, he was like, was he breathing? Was he whistling? Like whoop, whoop. he was. Doing <laughs> That's y'all boy. That's y'all boy. Anyway, even with that joint, it's number one now. I ain't mad at that. Um, Rick Ross was funny. Drake did his shit. I ain't, I'm not even gonna front. I ain't wanna like it. It's kind of like hit him up. <laughs> ain't one like hit him up. Was yeah, big. Nigga uh, like said he fucked your wife, bro. I don't know to tell you. <laughs> Even though I, I can't get drink all his props though. Let me be critical real quick before I go on to the next thing. Um, nigga, we don't give a fuck about that nigga splits. What the? F- <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> it's the music industry. Of course, he getting jerked. Plus, ain't that the same shit Pusha said about you? You getting paid from another nigga that's paying another nigga to paying another nigga. Like, bro, he's Exodus, ring a bell. Like, that's what you coming with? I got more in the stash. Okay, Jay-Z. What you mean, E? When Jay-Z came at Nas <laughs> at the end of the end of takeover, he said. You know who did you know who, but I just leave that between me and you, right? Then Nas dropped Ether and burnt his ass. <laughs> and then Jay came back with Super Ugly and admitted that he had slept with Nas' baby mama. And then he had to apologize because his mama told him so. So y'all get off J. Cole because his idol or his uh, financier <laughs> did it first. Uh, <laughs> You didn't know that, did you? Anyway, but I said all that to say, uh, first of all, Drake, we don't seen that. It's, it's been done. Um, the song is dope, but you could have did a little better than talking about a man splits. Like, all right, so. Uh, <laughs> but I like the song. I ain't going to front. He did a good job. I'm, I'm not going to shit on Drake and say he didn't come with it. As far as a battle track, he did his thing. He did what he had to do. Um I wish he would have came more, what was it, diplomatic immunity Drake. That Drake would have been cold, but he decided to come with a little bounce. Uh, I think it was probably because he felt like if I can make it if I can make it danceable, then play it in the club and then this nigga can't escape from it. Cause it's gonna I mean, look at the Kendrick Future joint. It's number one. It's gonna get played, right? It's gonna get synced with whatever <laughs> it was hot. All the TikToks and the IGs and Drake won't be able to escape it because it's the number one song. So I think Drake was trying to get in that lane. Uh, but I would have rather Diplomatic Immunity Drake because I think that's the coldest Drake. Uh, but here we are. Uh, so we'll see. Um, I don't know if anything has happened, transpired in the past 24 hours. Podcast land. By the time y'all get this, I don't know what's going to happen. But we're going to see. Um, but at the end of the day, um, yeah. This, this is not going to save hip-hop. It's fun. It's exciting. But it's not going to save hip-hop. If you want to save hip-hop, uh, go support those those rappers that don't need beef. All right? Um, to get on. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> I want to cry before I cry. Uh, man, I don't even know how to get into this because it's really sad. Uh, all I can say is it's so hard to say goodbye. Uh, shout out to the Beatles. Um, first, Mr. C, uh, DJ to Big Daddy Kane and uh, Biggie uh, passed away uh, this week. And actually, I got a report. To, hmm. Okay, an exclusive on all hip hop from April 15th. The pioneering DJ's family shared that the medical examiner of New York City determined that his cause of death was diabetes-related culinary ulnary kidney disease. So, um, but yeah, DJ Mr. C's uh, legendary uh, DJ out of New York, uh, Brooklyn. It's Brooklyn in the house. Um, Yeah, man. Only 57 years old. And then also this weekend, we learned 
of the loss of one Rico Wade, um, the general, five-star general of the Dungeon family, DF, uh, who gave us great acts such as Outkast, Goody Mob, um, Wish Doctor, Cool Breeze, um, and then extended to Slam Calhoun, Killer Mike, which Killer Mike, you get um, Run the Jewels. Uh, Shouts out to, oh, uh, I can't think of my man's name. Jeez. Anyway, that's all to Run the Jews. Uh, both of these guys, for me, were instrumental in bringing two of my favorite artists to the masses. If you know me, you know my favorite artist of all time is Biggie, the reason why I even freaking rap or even interested in rap, and um, Outkast. Um, I actually I met Rico Wade uh, back in 2015, this picture here. Where's my thumb? Um, back in 2015, the A3C conference in Atlanta. Shouts out to my man, Sesti MC, and um, DJ A to the L. Uh, I accompanied them, accompanied them up there. Um, and I was able to tell him what he and the Dungeon family meant to me. Uh, now, I'm sure he heard that 100 times over, but... Uh, it was a moment for me to be able to tell one of my idols what you know what they've done for me and and how that affected my life. Um, because we got the outcast, like it gave me hope that an MC like myself could come out and do the type of music that I wanted to do. And plus, like my whole writing style, even with me and my cousin, like I basically tried to use that blueprint to put us on. Didn't work, but that's because we didn't have a Rico Wade. So <laughs> but um Big Side is that's the MC. He's the one who encouraged me at that moment to step up to Ray Murray and Sleepy Brown, um, who were also there at that uh conference for or it was like an event. And they were, I think it was honoring organized noise in the event. And um man, yeah. Man, I was only 52. And it's crazy. I thought about this connection as well. Uh, uh, Kirk, hope I said that right. <laughs> the owner of Patchwork Studios uh, told a story that basically organized noise, Rico Wade, with Outkast, essentially, were they were they first startup or the, the, the first artist that they worked with in Patchwork. Uh, of course, those who know the history of Goldie Sound, that my man AD, he uh, did his work, put in his work at Patchwork. Um, and with the stuff that he learned from Patchwork, came back to Tallahassee and opened up the studio. So I feel like, in a sense, being here is an extension of the work that Rico Wade just put. And that's. This is to show the extent of his legacy. Um, that we probably wouldn't be here. I probably wouldn't be here, me and Mikey, <laughs> you know, doing our thing if it wasn't for the work that Rico Wade put in almost 30 years ago, or over 30 years ago. So I'm hurt. Atlanta's hurt. Hip hop is hurt. Um, but peace uh, to those brothers, uh, DJ Mr. C and Rico Wade, peace to their families. And their close friends, and um, yeah, we gotta we gotta take care of ourselves, man. And I'm, I'm looking at you, but I'm looking at me. We gotta take care of ourselves. We gotta do better. We get older in this hip hop thing, and um, we gotta be mindful of our health, what we put in our bodies, how we take care of ourselves, our exercise, um, and just the stresses mentally. Because your mental health is part of your physical health. It's all tied in. And, again, go back to the whole beef thing. Yeah, it's fun. It's cool. But that is a stress that could lead to um, an early death if you don't take care of yourself. So um, let's be a warning, man, because there's too many of us in this culture that's leaving out here way too soon. Way too soon. Enigma. No, 
Emmanuel. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself, bro. Anyway, we're going to go to the next track, man, and um, we're going to bring the guests on. Actually, this guy actually performed at the Beat, uh, beat Challenge by VHS. That's out the VHS and the Beast. And, uh, man, did a performance and killed it. And I was like, yo, I need that. Pause. <laughs> Run that to you, run that to you, boy. Let me let me run that on the podcast. So, um, I want to mispronounce his name because I only read it. I can't remember what he took, what he, how he pronounced it. But uh, super dope uh, guy, super pro- dope performance and uh, just dope song. My man Old Trace with uh, Fiji. And he'll be right back, one man Mellow. This is the Nick Musep Hour podcast. You got time, baby. She said she wanna meet me, I might let her meet me. Let her meet me. You gotta call me O Trace whenever you greet me. I, I like my bitches ratchet, like my bitches greedy. She said she wanna eat me, she say daddy feed me. Get on top and ride me like a Lamborghini. I, I'ma eat the kitty other like the Queenie. Honestly, that's if I'm off the hit it. Splash. Fiji. She said her name Chanel and she in love with Fendi. I, I told Chanel I'ma keep it a Fendi. Once I get that pussy, I won't pay a penny. Don't take it personal, that's just a pay in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got the call in this lady. I just got the call in this lady. You know I'm the man in my city. You know, splash. Fiji. Fiji. Anything possible, we can be sipping on Henny. Yeah, yeah. I make a call in this lady. I make a call in this lady. You know I'm the man in my city. You drop it. Splash. Fiji. We really running this shit, but you gotta believe me. I want a rich a million. Gotta reach a million. I, I be chasing Benji. I don't chase the Henny. She asked me, could she see me when I touch the city? Cause me, me, all cocky. Yeah, you know it's Liddy. <laughs> Let's switch it up. Stop playing. How does we dumb on my visa? I might go up on my features. No, I can't ease up. I got the green light from Jesus. He said the industry need us. I'ma turn them to believers. Shake the game like a Caesar. I just want the Velveeta. I'ma get a media truck to do his Derek Jeter. Keep going. Ride in a two-seater. It's just me and Miss Nina. Out looking for an eater. Turn your wife into a cheater. Splash. Splash. Fiji. <laughs> I make a call in this litty. Yeah. yeah, I just got the call in this litty. I just got the call in this litty. You know I'm the man in my city. You know it. Splash, splash. Fiji, Fiji, Fiji. Anything possible when you be stepping on Henny. Yeah, yeah. I make a call in this litty. I make a call in this litty. You know I'm the man in my city. You know it. Splash, splash. Fiji, 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 Fiji. We really running this shit, but you gotta believe me. We really running this shit, girl, you gotta believe Boom, 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 and we back. It's your boy Enigma September, and this is the Enigma Sep Hour podcast. We just heard my man Old Trace with Fiji. Um, yeah, got that Brooklyn drill sound that I like so much. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, without further ado, we got the guest of the hour, my man Mellow Beats in the building. What's going on, my bro? What it do? What it do? What it do? What it do? Good, good, good. Um, shoot, I don't even know where to start, dog. Start where you want to start. <laughs> you want to start? You want to start? Um, shoot. Oh well, I we we'll into that later. If you just go ahead and let the people know, uh, what what started it for you? What, what got you? What, what what was your first taste of music that made you say, "Yo, I, I think this is for me"? Neptunes. Mmm. Neptunes. Anybody know a little bit Neptunes? Yeah. The Neptunes is they they're different. It just they bring something different to the table. So I was like, yeah, that's my lane. 
First of all, you legit. Talking about Neptunes. He even say he. He didn't even say like Timberland. He didn't even say. I like Tim. Don't get me wrong. He didn't wrong. say DJ Premier. I like Tim. That man said Neptune. That's two. That's two thousand. The, the, the Neptune. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the Neptune. I like the Neptune. Nah, I'm, I'm just messing with you, bro. No, Neptune's fire. It be your own people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to. Um, now, particularly the Neptune, you know they got a little, a little tough to beef right now. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, how you feel about that? They gonna hash it out. They gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they hash yeah. it out. They hash yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think on the episode I, I talked about it. I was like, it's probably just the lawyers. Like they probably chilling. Yeah, they chilling. But it's probably just the lawyers doing. They've been doing this for so long. So right. They just, they, they hash it out. They hash it out. I bet. So okay, with the Neptunes, I mean they known for like sinks and stuff. So wh- what about the Neptunes? Was it just their production or was it? Like what made you? What what was their influence on how you approach start started approaching beats? It was the um I like chords I like keys mm-hmm. screams hum, um, horns drums just came later to me so yeah I just like their their sound is different and they just it's the way they arrange their keys and drums and hi hats it just it just brings something different to the table right like you can still fit your style with their style with today's music. Right, no, that's for real. Their music um, is timeless, and like you said, I think because of the the musicality of it. Right, you know what I mean. So, what's that type of shit I like to talk about. Just, <laughs> we finna get into that. I ain't no music guy, but I like talking about music. So I'm, I'm that weird person. Uh, <laughs> I can't tell you what a fucking B flat is, but I like talking about it. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I can't tell you notes. Right, I can't tell you keys. It just, if it don't it just, sound right to me, it just, mm. I'm not gonna let you hear. It. Right. If I don't like the way it sounds, I'm not gonna play it for you. Right. Until it sound right to me. Right. So if it sound off here, you be like, oh, go back that. Nah, you, you're not finna hear that. Right. I'm, I'm skipping that. Beat. That was a bad note. We're not doing that. Got because I also too kind of made me wonder. Uh, what's your feelings about the title of either being a beat maker or a producer? Like, where do you think you fit? Or do you think that should even be a thing? A lot of people make it a thing. Mm-hmm. But you can be, like, some people just like to make beats. Some people produce, like, okay, this is how we're going to do the layouts, this, that, and the third. Or they might help with the lyrics mm-hmm. here and there. They be like, oh, then that, you're a producer, you're a beat. Nah, it's just, it's just, I might make a beat and just, while you're rapping or coming up with a hook, I might say a line to help you out, and oh, now I'm a songwriter, now right? I'm a producer, right? Nah, it just, it just I, don't, I don't get into that. I was just, I just let them debate about that, and I know why I see it, right? So basically, just it's whatever. It's whatever. I mean, you're just a music man. That's what it come down to. Right. I'm not finna. I'm not finna debate. I'm not finna argue with you. <laughs> you're right. All right. And I, and I, just, and I just leave it at that. <laughs> Sure. Right. And I, that. <laughs> I stick to what I can do. Stay. I stick to my lane. I try not to overstep nobody. And that's it. Right. I'm not going to just, oh, you doing it wrong. You need to do it like this. Nah, you do you. Right. Like, you, you this is what you want to do. This is what you do. You make you make the best of it. You, make, you have fun doing what you do. Right. Right. I do think that's important, bro. Like, if you go in there and you just got this Stoic attitude of well, it got to be this, that, and the third. Like it kills the fun out of it. Like you got to have, yeah. And don't tra- and it can't translate because at the end of the day, that's what people want. Right. Nine times out of ten, you make music, you want it, to fun, you want people to enjoy it. But if you can't translate that into music, then what's the point? You know what I mean? You, you, if you don't, if you don't have fun when you when you in the studio, if you can't have fun with the artist doing what you do, now you got to get me wrong. You got some picky artists, right? Right. Oh, you got to do it like this. <laughs> yes. I want this to do this here. And, and you ain't paying this right here dollar for that to be done. Right. So take just just take what we hey, we know what you we know what you trying to do. Let us do what you what you think you think you're trying to do. Right. Cuz we we the experts. So we're working with your budget. <laughs> we're working with your No, budget. I saw a TikTok like that. Like dude was like um what was it? It was it was photography. I do photography. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, it was like um, pay high paying client 
send it off, boom, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Low pin, kind of lying. Can you change this? Can you add the lighting? Can you put? Can you Photoshop this? And it's like, wait a minute, bro. Like, <laughs> you paid a hundred dollars for this. What is yeah, you? you gonna get what you pay for? <laughs> right. Or can you send me the stem? <laughs> can you send me the stem money? <laughs> we can stem from there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what you trying to do with them stems? Oh, they, what you? Not a damn thing. I'm trying to get it mixed and mastered real quick. You can help me out. Nope. You can help me out. No, they, they don't. They don't understand it. Like a lot of artists don't understand that, and they don't want to get into that because they'd be like, "Oh, we got we the rappers, the singers. We got to pay for this, 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 this. We we make beats. Right. We got to pay for the sounds mm-hmm. all the time, but we got to pay for the sounds, the equipment, the laptop, Plugins. the plugins. Mm-hmm. We got to get our IT men to install everything if we don't know how to install it the right, right way. Hard drives, flash drives, external drives. We got to do all that. Right. I mean, just because you got to pay for the video, the beat, studio time, mix and master, that's that's what comes to an artist. Right, right, right. They're, those are all the same elements, but and honestly, I still don't, I don't get y'all. Because I'm like, I don't know. Why so many people that want to become artists, especially for the sake of just being artists, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like not even on some on some shit. Like I love art. Like I get that. Clearly, I get that. But just to oh yeah, I want to be a rapper because it's cool. Like bro, you at the bottom of the totem pole. Boy. Or I want to be a rapper because I want to hustle. What? You paying the most? Like you the one out here getting paying for this, paying for that when? Hey, but not getting nothing back. Oh, that's what I mean. Not to say paying the most, but you don't want to put money out and hardly get anything back. You know what I mean? And then you got you got you have some artists that are, um, like I say, I hate them. But they go to YouTube, <laughs> they get the beat, right? And then you be like, oh, we had to do this, this. You didn't pay for the beat, and then you wonder why you get bammed or your song get flagged, right? And get pulled down and or don't go up, right? Then you be like, oh, we got such and such, we got to do this, but y'all don't. Hit. Some of us, some of us, not everybody. But some of us producers, if we, if you get the beat from us, you do good business with them. We gonna help promote the song, right? Because at the end of the day, that beat blow up. That beat blow up. That can more business for me. That more business for me. And then we helping you get out there with our fan base and your fan base because you don't know who we work with, right? You don't know who's in our stories, like on Instagram. You don't know who watches our story. You might not see them in the likes and the comments, but you look at them stories. You yeah. See, you see who's you see in who watching. Stories. You see who watching. I ain't gonna front, low key. That's that's kind of my pitch for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I know, know y'all may be clowning me about them three hundred followers, but look here, I got some eyes, some notable eyes looking at me. So that's the main thing. Be mindful. Um, <laughs> I hope they're looking at me. They looking. Hey, <laughs> subscribe to my page. Um, anyway, <laughs> but no. Um, yo, speaking of. Jacking for beats. I ain't gonna front. Me and my cuz. Sorry, bro. Uh, <laughs> not this cuz. I got a new cuz. Y'all ain't even know that. Uh, <laughs> we got my cousin here. Shouts out. Shouts out to Gas and County. So does. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna be your nickname, cuz. Nickname you saw this for right now. I'll take it. Right. I'll take it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Shout out to the other cuz I was rapping with. And uh, yo, we ain't gonna front. We used to jack for beats. Shout out to SoundClick. We used to go on SoundClick, download them beats, and make whole mix. We we'll call it mixtapes so oh, we wouldn't get in trouble. Yeah, still, yeah. Still, 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 but it was still, still, still. <laughs> it was still running. But I will say this what I ended up doing, it was one guy in particular I remember I used to go and like jack his beats. Hey, it paused all that, matter of fact. Uh, <laughs> and. Um, but I did go back on my my last project, Super Enigma, and most of those beats was from that guy. Like I actually went and paid him for the for the joints as opposed to just running sound clicking. I did just it. I, I did it with my beat star page. Now I got it where you know for the artists that's on a budget and they can't pay for exclusive beats, you can mm-hmm. you can lease the beat. Right, thirty dollars. Right, for well, twenty nine ninety five. Close enough, <laughs> but it's it's more it's more comfortable and more reasonable for the artist. And like I say, you get the paper it with it and all that good stuff. Right. So you won't have to. Oh, I ran off on it. Mm-mm. Put the beat on YouTube for why? Right. 
so y'all can take it. Mm-hmm. Right. Know what I did. Yeah, no. Nah. And it, so let me put this out right now. Do not jack for beats. I'm a whole. I'd be a whole hypocrite. I did it for a whole 15 years ago. But <laughs> I did not agree with that at all. And I'm not saying that because Melo here. Like, for real, for real. At the very least, like you said, you can lease the beat. You can lease beats. Like I said, if you don't think, hey, this is probably going to go nowhere, it's probably just going to be a local project, whatever, whatever, lease it. Now, if you super serious and you're really trying to push it, you know what I'm saying, you're really trying to put it out there, then, yeah, go ahead, buy the, uh, what, buy the exclusive, buy the get exclusive. the rights to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So y'all, uh, your base is covered. Um, now, speaking of the exclusive or purchasing the exclusive, um, I did want to ask you about your uh, opinion uh, about uh, sync or sync production. That's when you know people make these joints and then they sell it like for commercials or oh, TV shows and it. stuff like that. You do know what it. I mean? So, yeah. have you experienced any I'm of that? Actually, I'm actually into that now. Okay, I'm at, I'm actually doing that now. I've done a couple. Sinks here and there, yeah. But now I'm getting into the more bigger market. Mm, okay. So I can't speak on that right now, but oh, nah, man, we're trying, trying to get the exclusive. Mellow. But, Come on, dog. I trying to get but, the exclusive. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say, um, I mean, shouts out to um my boy Luke, man. Mm. We um we got some. We got he we got. I did one with a credit score. Okay. Uh, and tropical, not tropical smoothie. Yeah, I about to say. I was, S- smoothie time. I think that's the name of them. Okay, smoothie yeah, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. We did one with smoothie time, so yeah. You um, I did one with those, and I got a couple in a movie that's supposed to be coming out on Tubi. And like I said, I got the more bigger stuff that I can't get into right now. So yeah, nah, that's fine. I think a Tubi is fine. God damn, I'm, I'm impressed with that, nigga. What the fuck you talking about? <laughs> you got Netflix, nigga, because it's Tubi. I'm, I'm <laughs> that, that Netflix is where it is. Mm. Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Max. <laughs> That's Hulu. Hulu taking all my money. I stay on Hulu anyway. Right, right. <laughs> Hulu and YouTube. That's all. I, that's all. This, that's all I watch. Um, yeah, because I was just matter of fact earlier today, I ran into a video about like sync or whatever. And I was talking to my wife about it, and so I was just like, oh shoot, let me let's see what this about because it just to me. I'm old school. Fuck y'all. Uh, <laughs> keep waking up, nigga. Oh, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it's like it's, it's new to me. You know what I'm saying? Because back in 2002, you weren't thinking that. You weren't yeah, thinking you weren't not that. thinking about you know. I mean, it, it didn't seem possible, especially with the internet wasn't as expansive as it is now. You know what I'm saying? And easy to navigate. So it's, it's more money in sync lights too. Mm. It's more money. It's like like lucrative. Right, like, like you can do one, and they can take that same one beat, and then just and lose it in different other clips and other shows. Be like, hey, we want to give you this dollar amount to use it for this this show or this season. Now, if you get now, if you get the intro or the outro, oh, you good. You oh, look, wait. So it's like, so it's even it's even joints like as far as the pla- where the placement at now, yeah. like. Oh shit! Yeah. See, that's what yeah, I'm it's, saying. It's way more. It's way more. Especially like you get like the the in, the intro music. They're gonna play that how many times? Every time the show come on. Every right? time. Oh, I got you. So it's, it's not so, like so you, it's you just more, get a scene in, in a so show. Yeah, it's more money. But, oh, okay. I got you. Because if you get the intro or the outro, you you set. Right. You good. Then you can just put that on the shelf because you know what that's you know that's what that's gonna do. Now you work on the next one. Right. Then you get to the point where they be like, hey, we need something for this, this, and this. So now, now you're getting more because you're like, oh, we heard this. You do this, so can you do something for this? Right. You never know where it's going to land. Damn, that's crazy. So it's almost it's still a gamble, but a good gamble. Like, yeah, like, yeah okay. it's still a gamble, but it's a good gamble. Yeah. Damn. I fucked up. I'm doing podcast shit. Why no. mm. he start making beats, my nigga? Mm. Fuck y'all. Uh, <laughs> you, know, I mean, listen, you never know. You never nah, know. Nah, let me stop. Nah, I ain't got no. I started rapping because I couldn't do nothing. I, couldn't, I ain't had no rhythm. I couldn't sing. So I was just like, hey, let me, <laughs> let me put these words. I express myself some kind of way. Let, let me put these words together. You know what I mean? I could write. I could always write. I was always a writer. Newspaper journalism. Um, I can't talk. I don't know why I'm doing this podcast shit. All this radio shit. It All works. this call center shit. It works. <laughs> it works. You never know. Yeah, you got to put on the voice. You know, You know. hello, this is Dan. We're just calling you. Yeah, it's, it's, the voice on him. I sound like, I sound like Porky Pig out here. <laughs> I blah, 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 blah. <laughs> 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 
that, 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 that is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> no, I literally had a stuttering problem when I was a kid, straight up. So to see 43-year-old me on the radio doing podcasting, ra- had a, having a, a rapping career, Fuck y'all again. Uh, <laughs> you never, like, you're never too old. It's it's to crazy. Do. It's crazy. Not too old for the rapping shit. Don't, don't, you, nah, you, I'm straight. You never, you, you never know. I am Gucci. All right, right. Sit in the seat and get my Joe Button on. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, maybe we're going to get into these tracks, man. And then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about your future. I'm going to talk about a little bit of your past and then going to the future. That's fine. We'll do that. So, uh, shoot, I got I'm thinking, my man Mikey got it set up. It's on me, my nigga. Uh, we're going to hit y'all with this uh, Bobby Fiscal. And then uh, we got this Black Boy. Mm-hmm. I can't read the Think of Majid because. It's Black Boy, Amy, um, Road yeah, Runner. Right All right, bet. So we're going to come with, come with y'all with that. And we're going to be right back. This is D, you nigga myself, our podcast. You got time, baby. Okay, hold on. 
Hey. Marathon, the lip and your nigga be road running. I be in and out of traffic with the sack, I got a talent. Do everything on the dash, law enforcement ain't a challenge. This my instincts are savage. As soon as I touch down and make my rounds, I'ma do damage. This spot, I'ma do some damage. Hey, when I get in the mode, gotta hit the road, pick up the low. When my plug hit the phone and say it's a go, bitch, it's on. When I'm in the mode, gotta hit the road, pick up the low. When my plug hit the phone and say it's a go, bitch, it's I just hopped off the interstate. When I get home, they finish. The hate, but I need plenty cake In other words, fuck what them niggas think My phone doing numbers Feel like it's time to feed the city If I don't like your numbers, that's what's up Bitch, I can't visit, crackers get behind me They gon' be pissed and I'm convinced I'ma do everything on the dash That's on my jets, I'm on my shit And I'm with Ammy, we in Tally Doing units with the fellas Can't you smell it? What's your address? We gon' mail it I be in and out of traffic with the sack I got a talent Do everything on the dash Law enforcement ain't a challenge Bitch, my instincts are savage As soon as I touch down and make my rounds, I'ma do damage. This spot, I'ma do some damage. Hey, when I get in the mode, gotta hit the road, pick up the low. When my plug hit the phone and say it's a go, bitch, it's on. When I'm in the mode, gotta hit the road, pick up the low. When my plug hit the phone and say it's a go, bitch, it's on. Yeah. <laughs> God damn! All right, we back. This is the Nick What's Up Our podcast. Uh, but what was just heard, Melo? Because I can't read. <laughs> oh, that was uh, Black Boy Slim and Amy L. Roll Run. That's on my first album. Word. All right, yeah. then we had Fiscale. Yeah, the Fiscale the, way. The Bobby. Shout out Bobby. to Bobby Fiscale. Um, respectfully, where my man's at? Bobby. Yeah. We Y'all work? Okay, that's, got, a, that's, got, that's, that's got, the intel I want. Thank you. We got some. We got some on the way. We got, right. we got a lot of stuff on the way. Okay. Yeah, a lot. Of, Bobby got some. P Bird. Mm-hmm. Rico. Um. Fun fact: Mikey gonna be in. You don't even know it yet. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert! <laughs> put you on. Put you on on the uh, game. This is gonna happen. Right. Um, <laughs> I see. Oh, um, who else? Lava, mm-hmm. um, uh, da, 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 um, couple big people, big big people. I can't talk about. That's you know, there. Yeah. Um, locally, I got. That's how I'm working on my third album. I'm producing the whole sh- shebang of bang. Mm-hmm. Um, and six more other albums. Under okay. The, okay. Other people albums, like. The placements and stuff like that. Like, we shouldn't say his name, but we no. got an R&B album that we got to finish. Okay. He's he going to be laying down on, on the cover. <laughs> Not like Mike Jack. <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> That's a lot of Richie. <laughs> we relax like he's 84 in there, boy. Uh, <laughs> yo, all right. Cause speaking of, because um, we got a lot of artists. And we say local artists has, has been signed lately. Yes, but kind of like the the kickoff was Bobby. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Holler at your boy. Matter of fact, I got somebody I can holler at, holler at you, but holler at your boy, Bobby. Uh, <laughs> um, it's like a threat. I'm gonna get killed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, but I guess I kind of wonder like the whole Quincy Tallahassee not verse. They can say verses. Ain't no beef. But he's from Quincy. Right. So, would it be fair if people from Tallahassee claim them? Or would it be like, nah, y'all, y'all stay over there because y'all been wanting to stay over there? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I honestly don't know. I can't, mm-hmm. I can't really answer that answer. Yeah. That question. So, I don't know. But, you know, Quincy is a, is a smaller town. and But it's, don't get me wrong, it's talent there. Right. It's right. It's just people just... They made they made bad decisions on why they, how they want to go about doing it, mm-hmm. and they just don't have they don't have the drive like that person behind you or that team behind you to push you. Right. Like I said, I'm from Quincy, so right. I push myself, and then what what I got going on in my life, I don't let that deter me. So I just use that to push myself. Right. And then I got my kids. So right. Word. <laughs> That's all my conversation I had with Cuz when we first met, but. Well, now you say something about Havana Northside and uh, 
<laughs> and shakes get them together. <laughs> Boy, listen. <laughs> That's how old I am. And I went to both. Shakes. Havana Northside. Mm-hmm. I don't even know about some gas on Like, what? No. Um, I guess it's, go ahead and tell the story about cousin. So, growing up, my dad, may he rest in peace, uh, he used to tell me, he's like, yo, be anybody for sodas and your people. You don't, you know, you don't mess with them. I guess he's talking about the girls, rather. Right. Like, right. You know, your people. Bro, so whole life. All right, whatever. You ain't run nobody from Sawdust. Lo and behold, we had the Um Bravo event. <laughs> I ran the cuz, and I'm like, Are you from? Yeah, I said something about Sawdust. Then he said, You're from Gaston County. And then he said something about, uh, I said something like, My people from Sawdust. He, he was just like, went from there. And he, he just, just went, went from, from there. there. And it turned out, he a Paul, I'm a beard, and. Well, I'm from so, Got the whole family right. One phone call. That's, yeah. that's some mafia stuff right there. Like, no, it's it's. Let me make a phone call real quick. Right. <laughs> that's what I felt like too. Ain't gonna front. That's a, hey, listen, we can make one phone call and find everything we need to find out. Right. Depending on what it is. Depending right. on what it is, we know who to call to get information. Yep. 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 I know for me, that's my uncle, my uncle Jerry, my uncle Ronnie, who live out there in Gaston County, and uh, my uncle Nikki, them two. If I call them up, they'll let me, they give me the whole, the whole rundown. The whole rundown. So. <laughs> Aunt Shirley on this street right, right here. <laughs> Your uncle Main Main down here. On, right. <laughs> they, they, done, they done took down Massey now, so, but you got to go over there by the Hardys and turn over by Stood. Right. And you should sure run in the Ray Ray over there. <laughs> You know what's sad though? I don't even know that much about Gaston County to be like I. I would I went there for some a photo shoot a couple of years ago, and I went down some road. And I was like, oh shit, it's a whole bunch of land back here. I ain't even know what's well, back here. Like yeah, I'm I'm sleep, bro. You can make a turn, make a turn, make a turn. And you in Georgia, right? Wait a minute, right, right. And I lived in Gaston County for a minute. I was in Havana. I blame my uncle. Waking showing up the roosters in the trees. Showing me roads that right. I shouldn't have known. Mm. Coming places like, so this is how you get to Chattahoochee faster. Oh, mm, see? See? Like, I, mm. I, I would know just one road. One road. One right. road. Straight nah. shot. But he, he know. He know this, 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 this. <laughs> he has his reasons why he knows them roads. Mm, right. So, yeah. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Come out in a harder way, be in happy town. <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen, yeah, them roads they don't play. Right, country roads. Y'all gonna learn one day. Anyway, uh, shout out to Gaston County. Um, they say you got one one album coming out and then the other project. When you know when that when your album gonna drop? Third album. I'm looking at the end of the, the not the end of the year, but towards the end of the year. Cause I did okay. drop my second album. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to do many songs as I can for this album because it's something I got to do with the first 15 songs. I feel good enough to go to these people mm-hmm. before I drop anything. Okay. And with that, out of but out of that, like I see these six albums I'm working on, fun albums. Just say we have fun doing these songs. I'm gonna say hey, that. Like I said, that's what we said. Yeah, that's what's important. You gotta have fun. Now you can't have fun. You can't have an occasional communion. Hey, I like that little communion, little come to Jesus meeting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When we get done, let them spirits fly. Good. The great music come after that too, right? While while it's being while offerings been been passed around, right? <laughs> Going up offerings first. Don't be. Just come with a cup, <laughs> an empty cup at that. There you come, go. Come with some offerings, some libations. Let the juices flow. Um, and where can the people find? Find the projects on all platforms. Okay, you find it on all platforms: iTunes, Pandora, iHeartRadio, mm-hmm. Google Play. Um, gosh, in, in, anywhere, uh, in, they're on two hundred and fifty platforms. So okay, you can't miss it. Just type it in, type in Frame Mellow, boom, Mellow on the beat, Vibe One, Vibe Two, Vibe Three on the way. Bet. All right, so um. Before we get up out of here, any shout outs or 
uh, dedica- dedication. It's like this <laughs> key sweat. This sweet this is sweat the motel. Sweet, this is the sweat hour. <laughs> yeah. It's the sweat hour. <laughs> Keith, I always love you. I'm going to have your baby back in 1988. I love you too, baby. Thank you, Colorito. (laughs) (laughs) Keith Sweat is a menace. (laughs) My wife hate him. Sorry, bro. You you, you fucked up with that one concert. But no, I can... (laughs) I can the people uh, fire you, man. Uh, IG, Frank Mello Beats. Facebook, Frank Mello Wilson. Um, those are the main two places I be. Um, Frank Mello, TikTok, Frank Mello, Snapchat, and Frank Mello Beat Stars. It'll be oh, on yeah. the link in the description. Yep, yep, yep. Somewhere. Send that to me. Matter of fact, it'll be up there. All right. I'll send it to you. I'm All right. send it to you. Bet. All right, we're gonna get up out of here again. Appreciate you, my boy, being here. Shout out, Cuz. Yeah. Straight out of sawdust. Yeah. There we go. The there we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> again, shout out to my wife, uh, Felicia. Got a cookbook on the way. Y'all stay tuned for that. Super proud of you, baby. Um, of course, big up to my baby, Mackenzie. Hope you ain't watching this episode. Your daddy, your daddy was cussing. And <laughs> a couple of times. Also, shout out to everybody out there. Hit those, if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Uh, podcast land, hit that subscribe button. Uh, shouts out to Freedom Train Radio, my man Pat, Joe, my girl Shelby doing her thing tomorrow um, on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, man, we're out of here. This is the Unique Myself Hour Podcast. You got time, baby.